<laughs> any more time. I, I'm Sean. I uh, am an infinite builder, and I also work. Uh, the, the description says I work. At, I, I'm an instructor at Egghead.io, but that's like a part time gig. Uh, I recently joined Nellify. Uh, it's good for you. It's, it's my new tag tagline. <laughs> um, and we we recently announced our first conference. Uh, it's happening at the end of October. Uh, we have. Uh, open CFP for speakers and we'll fly you out if you if you get accepted uh, the conference the speaker list is amazing uh, like West boss and Chris choir and, and a, a lot a lot of like big names um, I don't know how they got it I just joined the company um, but go if you can um, cool so uh, let's talk about GraphQL uh, I, I love that this is like the one meetup where I can actually talk about GraphQL and assume everyone knows it um, but no, maybe people don't know what the double decoration problem is because I invented it. <laughs> um, and the best way to kind of like sell a solution is to make invent a problem and then convince everyone that they have that problem. So then your solution is the thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm here to convince you that double dec decoration is a problem. But then I've already solved it. So um, so here is the here's an Apollo example. Um, so this is from React Europe. Uh, Peggy Raises uh, presented this. Um, Typical example, kind of just pulling from an API. Oh, I should also I should also um, show you the playground for this. Basically, it just shows you dog pictures. Um, just pings like dog. This is a very good demo. Like GraphQL demo APIs are very short lived because of how like uh, limits work. Um, but this is a very good uh, demo. Uh, it's because it's on Glitch and it's always on. So uh, if you're ever demonstrating a GraphQL um, uh, app, uh, you, you 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 can try you can try doing something like this. Um, so you know, it pings it pings the backend. I don't I don't need to, we don't need to worry about what the backend is. Um, but basically, this is the typical sort of uh, setup that you're probably familiar with. I just realized I'm blocking the screen for some of you guys. Um, all right, I'll try to I'll try to not move as much as possible. Um, <coughs> okay, so so good, right? Like we're we're, we're all familiar with GraphQL, um, and then so that's the backend. This is the front end. Um, I'm using Apollo here, but I could be using any sort of GraphQL client, um, and I'm requesting a list of uh, dogs. So this this just populates the list of dogs, uh, and that fills it in here. Uh, anyone shout a dog name, dog breed? Newfoundland. Wow. Newfoundland. I heard. Um, uh, you snooze, you lose. Um, so so then so then it, so then it pulls. So that's the list of dogs. From the list of dogs, it, it pulls in a specific string. Uh, for a dog breed, right? Um, and then it pulls in an ID and an image, uh, and that's your Newfoundland dog. So, so this is a very typical sort of GraphQL type demo. Um, and one one of the issues that comes up with, with GraphQL is that, uh, for example, there's there's another field here, right? So, for example, I want to display subbreeds. There's uh, that's available to me uh, over here in my dog breeds. So let's say I want to edit this thing, and just imagine if you're working on your own app. This is a very common situation, um, and Hello. Let's just check that uh, the, the compilation is, is working. Um, oh, I have to fork a sandbox. Ah, come on, Ives. <laughs> come on. OK, so um, let's see. Uh, where, where am I? Uh, I should have prepared this. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. OK, so, so basically, let me, I'm just going to add a field to my query, right? Oh, god, come on. No, 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 this, this happens, this happens. Uh, but code sandbox is good enough. For, for this demo because I've tried it. Um, let's see. Come on. Come on. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, we'll just we'll just go with short code. Um, so anyway, so let's say let's say we want to pull in um, data dot dog dot uh, what's the what's the backend so, subreads? Yeah. So this is an array. Um, and we want to pull that in, right? So, uh, hopefully, everyone can, everyone can see it. Can see it. Uh, this, if I if I pass this, if I try to render this, this will be be a blank, um, or it will, it will throw an error because I'm trying to read from an object, uh, read a, a, a non-existent property from an object because I forgot to add it over here, right? So I have to add things in twice, uh, and that's kind of the the promise of and, and also the difficulty of GraphQL. Notice also I have a, a, a random ID field which I don't use in my in my JSX, um, so it's it's very easy for things to fall out of sync uh, between your between your code. Um, I'm sorry that the code sandbox isn't working, but I'm probably on uh, limited Wi-Fi. Um, anyway, ah, why am I starting a video? No, I'm not starting video. <laughs> stop video. <laughs> stop video. Okay, stop video. 
Huh? I think I'm still connected, yeah. I am just trying to stop the video. Okay, I think that registered. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. I'm so sorry. Uh, my browser is freezing. Okay, yeah. Does someone want to hit the lights? Watch. All right, all right, my, my uh, all right. <laughs> Hopefully my browser is uh, cooperating. Um, oh, and that was me, I was supposed to market this as the conference. Uh, assume I already did that, just like rebase, rebase the presentation. Um, okay, so, so just back to, back to the slides, and I'm still recording this stupid video, what the? Okay, all right, so, so that's a double decoration problem. I, I, that was such a horrible, but you, you get the idea. Things fall out of sync between your, your query string and your in your in your JavaScript, so how do we how do we want to fix that? Um, so I, I started exploring this issue ah, called double uh, uh, and and oh yeah okay, I should have just gone here. Uh, so <laughs> here's a, here's a here's a sort of uh, non live version of this of the slides and 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 I'm just highlighting the uh, the, 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 the 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 sub fields that are uh, um, displayed twice. Um, <coughs> And also, and um, extra stray fields which are left in there, which doesn't really fulfill the, the GraphQL's promise of only querying exactly what you need. Um, so, uh, so, so to to really solve this problem, I, I started exploring this thing called metaprogramming. Um, some people, if you if you have experience with other languages, you probably know this, uh, but JavaScript is not in JavaScript is not that common. Um, so, the definition of metaprogramming from Wikipedia is a program that can be designed to regenerate, analyze, or transform other programs, or even modify itself while running. So, this is like very advanced, like programming to program, um, and a lot of people hate it, so uh, they modify it to say a program that can be impossible to read or analyze. <laughs> um, so that's another way to look at metaprogramming, uh, but my way of looking at programming, metaprogramming is that it's just code that writes code, uh, and you can write good code and you can write bad code. Um, so it's in itself, it's not really inherently evil or good. Um, it's just, it, it really comes down to how you use it. So we're gonna explore uh, some ways of metaprogramming. Uh, these are two really good talks. Uh, um, Brendan Ike from JSCon 2010, um, talking about why it's, it's like a missing, missing piece when he invented JavaScript uh, that, uh, that, that you know, it, it's, it finally lands. And, and Guy Steele on, grow, on growing a language, why uh, you, need to, you need to have these outlets for, for users to extend the language instead of waiting for uh, the platform to, to uh, move, slowly move forward and define every single time. Um, so these, I highly recommend these two talks. Um, and, and so in JavaScript, we have proxies, and these are, these are, there are other ways to do metaprogramming, but this, this is the one I'm just going to focus on, um, where, uh, for example, you have, you have an object. Uh, so that's, this P is an object, but I pass it through a proxy. And if I, and if I do, if I do uh, certain assignments like p.a equals 1, p.b equals undefined, I get exactly that in, uh, in the console. But I can intercept the, the, the object. I have a wrapper around the, around the object, and I can put in whatever I want. Um, so if, in here, I have a handler. And I say, like, if, if the object, uh, yeah, if, if, the, if there's something, if there's nothing found in the object, I can just return a random 37 or something. It's kind of like a man in the middle attack for, in terms of, like, in, internet security. Um, so here, if I, if I request a non-existent property, it's going to give me uh, the thing that I wanted. So, so proxies are a way to sort of uh, invisibly, like, this looks like an object. You can use it like an object, except for certain defined edge cases where, um, you, you know, you can, you can start... Uh, uh, putting yourself in the middle of that. So that's how it, I, I looked at proxies and I said, okay, um, I can use this to, to solve the double declaration problem. And I just kind of call it runtime metaprogramming. Um, and that, that basically involves writing a new GraphQL client that uses proxies. And let's just explore how we, how we can do that. So first of all, I, first step, I get rid of half the code. Um, second of all, um, I write my own connect function. And the connect function gives me a, a, an item called data. And the data is, is a meta object that's, that has a proxy wrapped around it. This meta object tracks everything that's, that's being done to it. So let's say I, I say data dot dog dot whatever. It just tracks every, every single request, uh, requested property from it and, and generates the GraphQL query from there. Um, so the, um, I call this React Blade. Um, oh, again, I should remember that I, I enabled highlighting because uh, MDX deck is awesome, <laughs> um, and uh, um, yeah. So, so these are so instead of having um, the double decoration problem, we we're literally only supplying once everything that we need um, from from our code um, and and generating the, the the GraphQL based of based off of this very minimalist uh, philosophy. 
Um, why, why is it called Blade? Uh, because when I presented it at work, everyone, everyone just said, oh, it's inline GraphQL. So that kind of just stuck, like inline skates, inline whatever. It's a blade. It, blade sounds cool. Um, so, so then uh, one, of the, one of the issues with this API is that uh, uh, you kind of need, uh, need a way for the data to flow upwards, um, in, whereas in JavaScript, everything flows down. Um, so the, the, the solution I came up with is actually to use a very early version of React Suspense. Um, if you don't use React, don't worry about it. Um, but basically, it just every time you try to read from a, a cache with no data, it just throws uh, uh, the request for data upwards. So it tries to read, and it says, oh, I'm missing this piece of data. It throws up, tries to get that data, tries to read again, oh, I'm missing this other piece, throws up again, and then all the way until, until it finishes uh, pulling everything that it has, uh, then it then it renders uh, the completed page. So um, so that was React Blade, but there's a, there's a problem with that, obviously, because if you have a lot of data on your on your page, you're going to throw a lot of times. Um, so that's very inefficient. It's also very hard to debug because proxies are meta objects, and, and our our consoles are not very good at uh, stepping through that code. Uh, so when you run into issues, you're really screwed. Um, especially because you have to write it recursively to, to propagate uh, meta objects downwards. Um, and then it also re um, it requires making my own uh, GraphQL, uh, GraphQL clients, which I don't want to do that. Um, there, are other, there are people smarter than me who, who, who have done that. So instead of runtime programming, uh, is there another way I can do this? Um, so an alternative is to, is to do it ahead of time, AOT. Uh, I think this is an increasingly important uh, frontier that is simultaneously going on in a lot of different areas in JavaScript, uh, including Angular, um, including uh, React in, in the future as well. Um, so uh, instead, of, instead of writing my own client that, that gives this weird thing called proxies that nobody uses, uh, what about we just like, move everything ahead of time and compile it for every GraphQL client? Um, I do want to shout out Justin because I didn't know you were going to be here. Um, he he, he uh, gave me a little bit of inspiration for like, I didn't, I, I never would have imagined myself writing this because um, I'm just like, I'm not that smart, but uh, just, Justin wrote a, a, a GraphQL loader for, for a few single file components. Uh, and that was like, to me, when, when I was like, oh, I can modify the way things are done to suit what I want. Like, that, was a, that was a huge uh, insight. So if you, if you use Vue, uh, definitely check out his, his um, GraphQL sort of uh, add-on. So, so <clears throat> uh, you're, but you're already used to a head of time compilation, and um, that's, I'm just going to recast Babel. You're used to Babel as a transpiler or a compiler, um, but you can also think about it as a metaprogrammer. So uh, this is a typical JSX transform, transforming JSX into a, a React function call. Uh, but that's, that's fine, but there, there's some problems with that. The problem is, is implicit dependency. So if I don't have the React... Uh, if I don't have the JSX transform enabled, right, I just copy some code and I just plunk it into my JavaScript app, uh, it's not going to work because I just don't have this magical uh, configuration that's hidden from me. Right? So uh, it's also global configuration, so it just transforms everything all at once. Um, and then it's unpredictable order. Like some of them, some plugins can conflict with each other, and if you, uh, in, because there's only, Babel only does one pass, um, it can conflict and you don't know what the result's going to be. A conflict, com conflicting is fine, but uh, unpredictable conflict is, is not good. Um, so uh, there's this new thing that was released with Babel 7 that was just out this week. Uh, it's called Babel Plugin Macros, and th this attempts to solve all those issues that I just raised, raised with Babel. Um, I recommend all these resources. Um, I'm going to bring you through uh, some of the, 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 the examples of, of the macros that are, that are already existing. Um, and basically, this, this allows you to explicitly import dependencies from Babel and then do code generation. Um, so, uh, I, for example, there's preval, which means which which lets you uh, calculate. Oh. Yeah, so definitely check out all these uh, these links. Well, not all, but whatever looks interesting to you. <laughs> um, so, so uh, for example, if if you can do some calculations ahead of time, so for example, you can say preval uh, one plus two equals three, and then you only ship you, when you transpile your, from, from Babel, you only ship three. You, you only you ship the result of everything that you can statically analyze ahead of time. Um, so obviously math is, is, is not as boring, but you can start uh, doing things like gen, uh, generating uh, files, generating code from your files. Um, and, and that can be interesting in building things like Gatsby or whatever other uh, you know, dev tools you, you want to use. Um, there's obviously code gen. Uh, there's, there, I think CSS and JS uh, is, a, is an interesting use case. So a lot of, a lot of people have, have uh, have, have uh, potential problems with uh, perf performance concerns with CSS and JS because um, you're using JS to simulate CSS. Uh, but really, if, if you use Babel, 
to, to push everything ahead of time, then you're just compiling CSS uh, using your JavaScript syntax. Um, so those are very interesting ways to do it. Uh, but the thing, the thing that I would focus you on, uh, especially if you use React, again, I'm a React person, uh, is, create, is the Create React App uh, version 2 RFC. So this is now in Create React App version 2, which is probably going to come out soon because that will uh, v2, v7 is out. Um, it's now a part of, uh, of Create React App. And that means that uh, you no longer have to eject for Create React App. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, just take my word that it's part of it. Um, so <laughs> uh, that, that, means you, that means whenever you need to configure your, your Babel plugin uh, for, for Create React App, you don't need to eject anymore because it, it's, all, it's all doable through uh, Babel plugin macros. So, so that's a big, it's a big deal, right, for, for Babel. Uh, and that's why I was part of the, uh, the, the official announcement uh, this week. Uh, and, and so I started using this, and, and, I, and, I made, and I made a macro, and I called it Babel Blade. So this is like the second attempt at, at, at attacking this problem. Um, there, are two ways to do, uh, um, there are two ways to try it out. One's on the REPL. So you can, uh, if, if, if a lot of you uh, are not familiar with, with the Babel REPL, uh, you actually can try out uh, different Babel plugins um, in, on the site itself. So here I have a... Uh, have a plugin, and oh, I don't have my own plugin enabled. Okay, so uh, so here here here's here's an example. For example, uh, so here's before and here's after, right? And I'm, I've got some sample uh, JSX code in here, and that transforms into React dot React function calls, same as uh, anyone anyone should be familiar with. Um, so when I when I enable my own plugin, uh, and there's like thousands here, right? Um, so this now this now takes the source data and it does whatever calculation code on it and it generates the output data and you can you can control anything you want uh, to to appear. So here I've I've made it generate my own GraphQL query on top of just the, the regular sort of usage code. So generating that query as you use it. So let me just add like an extra field like uh, um, that's going to pop up in there right as well and and then be used in in your source uh, JavaScript. Um, so. So those are those are interesting. Uh, that's I mean that that's interesting. But I'm going to walk you through for the rest of the talk um, about how you can use how you can use this kind of um, very powerful problem, uh, very powerful tool to solve your problem. Um, you may not be solving this particular problem, but you might be able to come across or think about um, how you can sort of transform your code to to solve any any of these issues. So we have the GraphQL spec, um, and I assume everyone's familiar with this. So I'm just going to tackle fields, arguments, all this. Uh, are, uh, aliases and all this stuff. So, so let's talk about fields. Um, and, and here I have a, an example pulled from Urkel. So again, a different GraphQL library. It's, it's agnostic because I, I'm just reformatting the code to, to suit that library. Um, so here, I have, here uh, here's what, this, is a, this is a demo pulled from the Urkel uh, docs. And it's, it's querying like movies. It's, got, it's querying the movie title. It's querying uh, the schedules. It's, it's querying the theaters that it's playing at. Um, so this is the source. Source code, right? And and this is all I want to do. So, and, and I've defined my own pseudo function called create query, and um, and this create query uh, is 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 how is how I'm controlling both the query as well as the data tracking. So this this generates the the sort of the, the what I call a blade, which is the, the meta object, um, <clears throat> and this transforms to to this, which is how you do uh, a fields and operation name. So the, the operation name becomes movie query, which is, what I, which, is, which is what I call my variable, and when I assigned it, and I created a query. And then uh, it gives me the fields just from the object properties, like movie.title, movie.schedule, all that good stuff. Um, so that's, a, that's an already interesting proof of concept, uh, but then we can start extending it even more, right? Because we only have, uh, half, we only have two of our fields. So how do we do our arguments and uh, aliases? So, Arguments. Uh, I'm going to pass them in as function calls instead of instead of object properties. Um, so I'm just going to say, uh, you know, parentheses, uh, and then I'll pass in the arguments, and that transforms to over here uh, um, the the the, arg the arguments in here, and what else? Oh, and then it takes a hash of the entire query. Uh, uh, it, it takes a hash of the, this query and then assigns it as, as the alias. So what that means is that you can put multiple. Um, Arguments, uh, argument queries in, in the same uh, GraphQL request, and they'll never conflict. So if you if you make a hard rule that aliases are always a hash of the, the query, then then you you're guaranteed to have a unique uh, query every single time. Um, so 
So that's that's that. Um, uh, I also want to make the point that uh, ahead, of, ahead of time doesn't have to mean static. When I actually made this presentation, I started referring to as referring to it as static uh, metaprogramming. But static doesn't quite capture like that. Doesn't mean that you have to know everything ahead of time. Um, so here, like I have a hard coded five here, right? Like, what if I if I, I only I'm only requesting like five movies? So what if I want to make that dynamic based on my user interface? Um, I can actually uh, make that uh, sort of reformat. Uh, you know, use template strings, right, to, to pass in code. So here, here, here are my, my uh, components taking in a, a property called movie counts, and I can pass in whatever number I want, and that reformats to, um, yeah, well, that's what I just said, thank you. Um, um, and that reformats to, to this, um, which is kind of the same thing. It's basically string interpolation. I don't know why I'm making a big deal out of it. Um, but, but, getting the, <laughs> but getting, yeah, getting the aliases right was, was cool. Um, writing my own hash and oh, it's just it's fun, uh, and um, so so those are those are like we're already accounting for a lot of the GraphQL spec. But then like to be really interesting, let's go uh, variables like query queries taken variables. So at the top level, that's what 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 that's what I mean by query variables. You've taken uh, variables at, at the top, and then that is reflected in in the rest of your GraphQL string. Um, so here I'm I'm taking uh, variables at the top and then um, reflecting it here. You don't actually need this because I made the, the, the ahead of time compilation dynamic anyway in, in the previous slide. Uh, but whatever, I, I just wanted to cover the GraphQL spec. Um, but you can get really creative because you now control your JavaScript. Um, so, and, then, and then so that compiles to this, which uh, if you're familiar with GraphQL is, you know, you're feeding in at the top, uh, you query variables at the top, and then that passes into your, to your field. Um, so, Maybe you don't need it, but uh, it's there if you want it. Uh, but it's 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 all super flexible. Um, directives are super easy because that's that's just another type of argument, right? So I've got directives here, and I can just put them in any order, just because that's the way I decided to do it. Maybe that's not a, a good rule. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out. Just put an at sign in front of it, and that's that's detected as a directive. So that transpiles to uh, this up here, and I just put the directives at the end. Um, so. So those are those are interesting ways to sort of format your JavaScript, right? And and to and to uh, to do it like this is definitely like you know work in progress and uh, you know it's a proof of concept, but it's you can see how this might work in your in your flow, and this might be the future of, of GraphQL maybe. <laughs> Not to overstate things. Um, so so and then the last bit, this was tough. This is fragments, uh, and basically fragments uh, essentially involve. Uh, uh, rejiggering a lot of the internals of, of, of uh, the plugin that I made. So fragments, oh, <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's, let's go into this. So first we have to create the fragment. So I, instead of create query, I now have a new thing called create fragment. And this is an in, in, basically like an incomplete GraphQL query, right? So I'm creating a fragment, and everything else works the same as, as, uh, as a create query, except that the, the, the transpiled output I need to put somewhere. So I, I just tag it onto the component itself. So, so now that I've created the fragment, Let's say I have a, a, a master uh, list, right? So I, a different component, and I'm consuming that fragment. So here I'm creating the top-level query, right? And then I'm and and I'm uh, and I'm taking the, the the fragment that I attached to my component uh, earlier, and I'm putting I'm putting that in as an argument. Um, so again, another a creative usage of of the arguments, um, and we can we can we can definitely go back and forth in, on the API. But these are these this is an interesting interesting way to solve the problem. Let's see what it compiles to because that's uh, that's that, that was the thing that actually tripped me up for a, a few weeks. Um, so this is what it compiles to, right? So we have the top level fragment, uh, very, very clean, uh, just, just consumes the, the object data. And then it, attach, it attaches this query string, but then it's, attach, it's attaching as a, as a, as a function. Um, and this, this took me a while to figure out. Uh, and the reason you, you, you want it to be attached as a function uh, is because you don't know exactly what the fragment is going to be called. Uh, it can be called anything. Um, uh, and and when you and so so let's let's so let's look at the app that consumes the fragment. Um, you can pass in any string that you want. Um, in here. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you can, you can pass in whatever string you want uh, over here in the original. Uh, yeah. So here here I've chosen to call it movie.fragment, but it could be reassigned to, to whatever name I, I choose to call it. Um, so that's that's what I allowed for. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Those that's a minor technicality, but it, it helps me differentiate uh, fragments from other arguments as well. So what else? Basically, I'm, I'm doing fragments. So I have a fragment, uh, and I have a full query, and I'm, I'm attaching the, the, the fragment together with the component um, towards any master component that, that, that deals with it. I can just pull it, pull it out. 
uh, from there. So, so this is a very interesting addition. Actually, it wasn't my idea. It was uh, Devin Govett from, uh, from Parcel and Adobe. Um, I just met him this, this afternoon. It's crazy. Twitter is awesome. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, we've reached our goal. It's not the full uh, GraphQL spec. There's some other details that I haven't uh, that I've glossed over. But just to give you an idea of where I am at uh, with this, like it's just a meetup. I'm sharing my my progress, my ideas. Um, it's definitely not fully done, but I encourage you to, to check out the the docs. Um, we have a nice Docusaurus um, page that I'm really proud of, and it's on Netlify, of course. Um, and I've got a whole intro. I've got a whole like getting started, and I've got. Uh, Step by step, everything I just walked you through, um, uh, how to how to do everything you want to do with GraphQL uh, on here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, do we take questions? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to take questions. I don't know if I can answer them. <laughs>